Okay. Uh, so let me give you a background. What this is about, as the name implies, optimization problem. Optimization. I was wondering if we did anything linear programming in your Form 3 IGCSE days. I'm not sure. I think uh, I, I don't think I went in detail, even if I mentioned it, where you find the maximum cost from inequality uh, inequality graph. You look at the vertex, uh, vertices of the physical region. Maybe not. Okay, never mind. We did. We did. Yeah. Uh, maybe, but I'm sure we didn't go too much detail. Probably because we had just nine months preparation. Unlike these guys now, they have like November the following year. You guys were like June of the same year. So there were a lot of things I couldn't go too much details into. The reason I mentioned that is because the idea of uh, li linear programming in inequality for your stage and I think for every other one, is to optimize something. So take for example, I won't go into linear programming. <coughs> In the linear programming problem, <coughs> we might say that, uh, oh, parents group of company produces maybe two types of bread, for example. Okay, bread A and bread B. Okay, and uh, so there are two parts to this. Karen's objective might be to maximize our profit, which is obviously what everybody wants to do, or minimize costs. Even though they kind of affect each other one way or the other, but sometimes in the, pro in the given problem we focus on one. Okay? So the objective now, if, if it is about profit, then we will be interested in how much does Karen make whenever the company sells uh, one unit of bread A and bread B. So assuming that Karen produces, bearing company produces X bread of type A and Y of type B, in terms of the profit, for each of these sold, the company makes a profit of $1. And for each of these, maybe the profit makes $2. So it means a profit function, P, if I can use that uh, term, will be what? X plus 2Y. Okay? So this will be the objective function. It's a function, as you can see, a function of X and Y. Objective, because that is our goal. Okay? So the objective function will be maximized. Actually, not just P is equal to. So the objective function will be maximize X plus 2Y. That's the objective function. Okay? or we can write it as maximize P equals X plus 2Y. Then subject to some conditions. Subject to con some conditions. What are the conditions? Some of the conditions could be as follows, just hypothetically speaking now, okay? The factory workers that work on bread A get paid for that one alone. They might be doing other things at work. Maybe they get like $5 per period, minute, hour, seconds, we don't know. And those that work on this get like maybe four, okay? So according to the accounting department of a company, for these workers, they have no more than 10,000 in a day to spend on factory workers, okay? So this is the uh, last amount they can have, 10,000. So it means, <clears throat> If they produce X, this five is paid for every unit that this person package. Understand? It means, oh, if they produce X units per day, it means they are going to spend five X on those that produce A, four Y on those that produce B, and the amount cannot go beyond $10,000. Uh, Understand? We could have so many other constraints like, oh, it is from maybe market survey or whatever, there is usually more demand of bread B than bread A. The another constraint will be Y greater than X. So all these conditions will form the inequality lines, then some parts will be shaded, and then you'll be left with some region that is not shaded which is called the feasible region. Okay, 
So we'll have shaded across the road. Usually in the IGCSE level, we tell students to shade on one third region. So if you are meant to shade this, you will shade the other way around. If you are meant to shade this, you will shade the other way around. If you are meant to shade this way, you will shade this way. At the end of the day, this region is blank. That is the common region to all the inequalities. Then we pick this extreme point and substitute them into the objective functions and see which one gives the maximum profit. The reason I mention this is because the same problem could be created for cost, to minimize cost. So we'll have objective functions like this, we'll have constraints as well, then at the end of the day we'll be able to pick all the x and y coordinate to be substituted to get the minimum cost. So there's usually a table, the point, the calculation, then we pick the minimum from the table. So what, what I'm trying to say in essence is that this objective is usually optimized. Optimized, we don't know which direction. Is it to make it bigger? Is it to make it smaller? Are you minimizing or are you maximizing? That's why I use profit and cost as an as illustration. If it's about costs, my goal as a business person would be to minimize my costs. I want to make profit, more profit, so I have to minimize my cost. Okay? If the goal, if the center, if the attention is focused on profit, my goal is to maximize my profit. Even top 300 company or top two company in the world still wants to continue to maximize their profits. Do you understand that? So, the idea of optimization deals with maximum or minimum. That's the whole point I'm trying to make here. So, the whole thing here, we now use our maximum, minimum, stationary idea. Are you with me? Minimum point, maximum point, that is the whole idea we're going to be using here. Okay? The whole thing I'm trying to do here is to give you the, the idea of optimizing. Because Sometimes, not knowing what these words mean confuse some people, so they don't know what to do or, you know, have, but looking at the, the topic, you can always guess what is this about. And when you see a question, you already know, oh, this is an optimization problem. Oh, and when we did optimization problems in class, this is how we did it. That's the whole point. And maybe some of you will come across linear programming problem later, then you could remember uh, this day, it's the simple illustration that you are given. Form 3 and Form 4 just did linear programming. So that's why I quickly connect it. Of course, I spent time with them on this. Uh, I don't think I spent so much time with you guys uh, two or three years ago. So, three years ago now, I think. So if you look at your worksheet, let's, I'll take some random questions. We'll do it together. Let's begin with question one. I think all of them are IB questions. Because this time around, I didn't specify IB. I just put the question number. So I must have taken everything from the IB pass paper. Rule allow. That means the question that comes out a lot, right? Okay. So let's begin with the uh, simple ones. Let's start with question one. Then I will skip question two and three because they are economics problem also. Okay. Then we go to something about fencing area or volume. We'll take maybe one or two between four and eight, then we can go to the next one. Let's begin with question one <coughs> from worksheet. So it's too long question, so we're not going to be writing it. Okay? Question one. So let's 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 read it first. Uh, I will probably project it for the next question. A potter sells. Or do you prefer question two? I just thought question one is uh no, no, no. Yeah, so question one is, uh, I think the function is already given. I'm looking at question three, where the function is not given. Maybe we could work it out ourselves. Shall we try question three instead? Or do you prefer still do question one? We do three instead. Okay, let's try. <coughs> I just copied and pasted anyway, so I haven't done anything. So hopefully, we'll just figure it out together. Maria owns a cheese factory. The amount of cheese in kilogram that Maria sells in one week 
is k, right? Is given by, so this is the amount of cheese, is given by q equals 882 minus 45p. Where p is the price of a kilogram of cheese in euros. Maria earns p minus 6.8 euros on each kilogram of cheese solid. Should that be solid or sold? <laughs> Sound like it should be sold, right? Okay, let's pretend it's sold. I will check on the question paper again. So, it ends uh, P minus 6.80 euro on each sold. Okay? To calculate our weekly profit, Maria sells multiple amounts of cheese. Maria, wait, Maria multiplies, sorry. Maria multiplies the amount of cheese she sells by the amount she earns per kilogram. I think everybody should know that. So profit function, pi, depending on P. Is, is it going to depend on P? Yeah. OK? Pi depends. So how do we get profit? This is the quantity, right? Mm -hmm. This is the price on each. This quantity is in what? In kilogram. This is the price on each kilogram. So basically, we are going to multiply these two. Understand that? So the profit function, I said, depending on P, okay, is going to be, I don't want to use P is profit again, because P is a variable. So that's why I use pi. Pi is something you'll have noticed in your economics a lot. Maybe not. OK, never mind. So pi equals, of course, you could use T, your choice. Okay, but no use P because P is already the variable. So it's it's two minus four five P will be multiplied by P minus six point eight zero. Of course, you can write six point eight. Okay, are we good so far? Oh, wait, weekly profit W. I think there's a variable for that. Can you see that? Weekly profit W. So they already give us a variable to use. So we can use five, okay? So this is it. Write down how many kilograms of cheese she sells. Wait, what? Write down how many kilograms of cheese she sells in one week. If the price of the kilogram, oh, so this is the price. This is the um, uh, weekly profit, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of p. So write down how many kilograms. So this is the number of kilograms, right? Talk to me, please. What does Q represent? Q represents how many she sells in a week. Can you see that already? So you should take note of those important points. Okay? Q represents the amount she sells in a week. So Q is quantity sold, is it? Uh, Maria sells in one week. Yeah, amount sold, or quantity sold. Should I call it quantity sold? Per week. Hello, am I still making sense? Or am I mixing things up? Wait, Q is quantity sold. Yeah, because it says the amount yeah. sold in kilogram. Yeah. yeah. So Q is the amount that was sold, right? Yeah. In kilogram. OK. And P is the price of each kilogram. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Price of a kilogram, aha, uh -huh. at, P, at P euro at p euro each okay, so let's just have this somewhere here so what is the question asking write down the write down how many kilograms that is the q right how many kilograms how many of this that she sells in a week okay if the price is eight so does this q function okay so it's not this one now so it means we don't need this yet Sorry about for the confusion. So Q is equal to 882 minus 45 times what? Eight. Times 8. Okay. So when P is equal to 8, so what do we get for that? So cloud up. 522. Okay. I don't know if they put the euro before or after. I think they put it after. 
522 AUR. Okay, fun. Yeah, this is the... Oh, yeah, yeah. My bad. So that is the number of kg. My bad, sorry. Find how much Maria ends in a week. So how do we find that? The how much she ends in a week. Mm -hmm. So she sells Q quantities in a week at this age, right? There's something about this one. She ends this on each, okay? And she sells this in a week. So the amount in a week will be the product of the two. Am I making sense? Uh, for the same eight euro, is that not? So again, when P is equal to eight, the amount she spent in the week, the uh, calculator profit, so that would be W, will be, usually it should be uh, eight, eight, two, minus, four. we don't need to do eight, eight, two, minus 45 again, but let's just write it first, eight, eight, two, minus 45 P, multiplying p minus 6.8 and this has been worked out to be 522 right then multiplying 8 minus 6.8 so what is that so this would be what 662.4 then this would be in euro please confirm yes okay now write an expression for doubling times of p c Write an expression for W in terms of P. So W as a function of P will be, that's what we wrote earlier, right? 882 minus 45P, 6, uh, P minus 6.8. Yes? 66. 66. 626. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6. 6, 6. Oh, okay. Huh? Mr. Cheng, you didn't get enough sleep. Is that correct now? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. 626. Six. You got 662 six again? Yes. Can you do 522 two times 8 minus 6.8? Yeah. No, bracket. Okay, 1.2, right? Yes. Yeah. And then multiply by 552. 522. Five, two, two. Five, two, two. Oh. <laughs> it's getting old. <laughs> it's getting old. Old man don't see clearly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, grandpa is 522, okay? <laughs> All right. Now, so is this okay? Is this correct? So we can simplify because, of course, we're going to, we can leave this at this point. But on the second point, uh, the second question, which is find the price P that will give Maria IS weekly profit. So please, listen IS weekly profit. This is the weekly profit. It means we want to maximize this function. At what value of P is this function maximum? So the first thing is to expand the bracket. 882P minus, what is that? Some of you are copying rather than being part of this solution. And I do not want you to ask me a question that is not relevant later. Yes? 5? 7.6. 7.6. Then we have minus 45 p squared. Then what is the other one? 306. No, I don't want the unread language. 306. 306. P. P, like that. Yes. So we can collect the like terms. Apparently, this and this can be combined. So we can have minus, oh, it, is, it doesn't matter. Add them first. What do we get? 1188. One, one, like that? Yes. OK. P. Then minus 5997.6, then minus 45p squared. So this is the W as a function of P. And that is what we want to maximize, OK? So when this is maximum, what is P? So what is the first thing you do? Say that again? You differentiate. So you find D what? The W D P. The W D P will be 1188, right? Mm -hmm. Then this is 90p, because so the middle term will be zero, right? So at maximum or minimum, okay? We don't know which is, let's pretend we don't know. So at maximum or minimum, okay, uh, dw dp must be equal to zero. So which means 1188 minus 90p is equal to zero. 
and that means 90p is equal to 1188. So p will be what? Say that again? 13. 13.2. 13.2? Yes. Okay. Exact number? Yes. Okay. So, but then, this is the price uh, when it is maximum. But then, we need to try to justify that it is indeed maximum. Okay? Find your second derivative. What is second derivative? Minus 90. Do you agree? So, minus 90 is less than 0, which means that uh, P is equal to 13.2 gives maximum indeed. You see, we don't need the corresponding y value. This is just the x value. Okay? So, you just write a conclusion. Find the price P, okay? Uh, that will give Maria blah, blah, blah. So, therefore, so what I will write, you can put in brackets a notification like, oh, yeah, this implies maximum. Therefore, uh, P equals, because it's right, uh, there's no need to write long story of pride. P equals 13.2 euro, is it? 13.2 euro gives Maria, gives Maria what? What? The highest weekly profit. The highest weekly profit, and that's it. So every maximum and minimum problem follow the same pattern. Okay? Understand your objective function. Okay? Know which direction you're going and apply what you have learned so far in differentiation. That's why I said this is not something difficult. It's something you have known before. Okay, please take note of that. Let me try to project the Try question one then. Okay. Take note of that and I'll try question one. Or maybe we do a volume question together with this, then you can do practice. So we don't have to be stopping, uh, we don't have to stop our recording short shots. Is that okay? <coughs> Too many files. Annoying. So for this one, what do you think of? Um, one on column. Please check question four or five. Pick one for me. Question four or five. Then question eight. So I want us to look at two together. Which one? Pick one of four and five. Five? Okay. So let's do five and eight together. Okay? Everyone, let's do five and eight together before you continue doing your thing. So question five. Question five says, consider triangle PQR. Please pay attention and be part of this discussion. You can always do your copying later. Spend time understanding the principle first. So there's a triangle PQR where angle P is 30 degrees. Even though the diagram is not required, it's always good to have a sketch. So P is 30 degrees. So P, maybe QR, something like that. Okay? 
Uh, PQ is X plus 2 CM. PR, this one, is 5 minus X all squared. That's how we know. Then we know that minus 2 is less than X less than 5. So I guess within, outside this interval, it's likely you have negative, something that you shouldn't have. If, if you have 6, by the way, if you have 6, now if you have 5 itself, this will be 0. If you have 6, this will be 1, and this will be 8. Maybe that's not the triangle there, per se. Like, I don't want centimeter and 30 degree. Maybe we'll not keep that. You understand? Anyway, so, but this, so whatever we solve, we must take this into consideration. Okay, show that the area of the triangle is given by something. So normally, how would you find the area of this kind of triangle? Half AB sine theta, right? Good. So it's as simple as that. So area A is half. This term around is not AB, so that would be half PQ times PR, right? Mm -hmm. Sine QPR. Is that what I just want to use the same notation they have used? Is that okay? So this is going to be half PQ will be x plus two, five minus x squared then sine 30 degrees, which is half itself. So clearly, this is 1 over 2. So we have to expand the square first. 25, 10x, right? Mm -hmm. Then x squared. And this is 1 over 2 also. So giving us 1 over 4, then we have to expand this. Let's expand. What do we have? Uh-huh. Minus x squared. 10x squared plus x cubed plus 50 plus 20 minus 20x plus 2x squared. Plus 2x squared. So we collect the like terms. This terms alone, 1 over 4x cubed. What about the x squared? Minus 8. Minus 8. What about the x terms? Plus five, right? Is it five? Yes. Then what about the constant? Fifty. Is that the required expression? Yes, that's the required expression. So the next thing will be I thought I put this on already. The next thing will be because I want to project the question. So it's easy to see. Okay, so we have just done the A part, let's go to B. B1, state dA dx, that's easy. dA dx, yes, let's do it together, is what? One over four. Three x squared. Minus 16x. Minus 16x. Plus five. Plus five, that's it. The next question says, verify that the a dx is 0 when x is 1 over 3. What do we do? Substitute. Just substitute. So put x equals 1 over 3. <coughs> the a dx, Diana, can we get this part? Yeah. Just confirm? Yes. Because I'm in a key term. 1 over 4. Okay, I use the square bracket because I'm going to use brackets inside. So 3. Brackets 1 over 3 squared minus 16, 1 over 3 plus 5. Let's put this in the calculator and see if we get 0. We get 0? Yes? Alright, great. The next question says, one. Find, so basically, indirectly, they already told you what the turning point is, right? One of the turning points. Even though it's a cubic function, right? They're supposed to have two turning points. Okay. Find d square a, d2 a, d a square. d2 a, d a square. d x square, sorry. 
will be yes. One over four. Uh huh. Six x. Six x. Minus sixteen. And hence, justify that that one over three gives the maximum area. What do we do? Substitute. Just substitute again. So the two a, the x squared is one over four. 6 times 1 over 3 minus 16. What do we get for this? Check quickly. This will be 2. This will be 14. So that's negative 7 over 2. Is it? And when this is negative, which is less than 0, that gives maximum. Is that not? So therefore, at x equals 1 over 3, the area is maximum. Okay? <clears throat> Two. State the maximum area of the triangle. What do we do? Uh, Who is speaking? Speak louder. Into uh, the, area. the area. Into the function A.